That's the driver side done, which is the simpler of the two. We'll have a video on how to do the passenger side, which is an absolute ass of a job. But for now, here's how we go about doing it. So we've got our Sparco bucket seats. Uh, they're not the, these aren't the uh, Sprints. These are some Sparco Ultras, a few years old. I picked them up, they're brand new, but uh, old man just had them sitting in his shed for a bit, so. Great condition, never used, they were for someone else's project, and now I'm gonna put them in mine instead. And we've got our Sparco rails here from Japan. Had to wait for them to come in for sliding rails, because uh, obviously with the fixed buckets, you wanna have sliding rails, makes it a lot easier to get in and out. Uh, they're a pain in the ass at the best of times, and the bolsters on them are very easy to damage. So if I thought, hey, we'll put some sliding rails on it, make life a bit easier, <sighs> let's get into it. Please note that although this guide is provided for your use in any way you see fit, putting in bucket seats or fixed buckets uh, is removing an airbag and does compromise safety. You do so at your own risk and you have to understand that anything you do or follow from this video should only really be reused for race purposes and kept off the street. At the end of the day, what you do with this video is up to you, but I can't say I encourage anything that you might do. Uh, stay safe, play smart, but remember, you do compromise your safety with any car modification, and that's a reality of anything. I feel like me and you got a car with airbags. Don't go disconnect nothing before the battery. You don't disconnect this first, you're in for a world of trouble. All right, so while we're waiting for the battery to discharge, or well, not discharge as such, but just for everything, the electronics to have no power in them, make sure we want to check that out. We're going to go ahead and grab ourselves a 14 mil socket and we're going to start unbolting the seat. Now you want to move the seat all the way back as far as you can. And then just in here, you'll see there's a 14 mil bolt on both sides. Now something to remember whenever you're disassembling something, imp something important, when you get your bolts, lay them out, especially if you're not experienced, lay them out in the same position or in the same order you got them out. That way when you put them back in, if there's any differences in the length of them, you're not going to do yourself any harm. So in my case, I'm just using the floor mat, so I know over there in a nice little contained space, I'm not going to go anywhere because this bolt's from the front right. I'm going to put it in the front right, just like that. Now you can go out and buy yourself a plastic trim tool set like this. You can usually get these online for about 20, 30 bucks or so. They don't need to be anything too crash hot. You just want yourself like a nice little pry bar, just something simple like this. Get under the plastic and pop it up. Just underneath this edge here, you gotta get it under the edge. Just give her a nice little pop and they pop right up. Now then, all the bolts are undone. And if you like your interior, go ahead and get yourself a rag, something soft, just put it over the edge of your sills. Because that way, if you clip this on the way in or out, you're not going to scratch up your interior. In this next video, I neglected to sh show you how to disconnect the clips. Uh, the yellow one here is pretty straightforward. It has a little plastic slider. You slide it in the direction of the wires on the cable, and then it'll just sort of slide off quite easily. That's the airbag one. It's really important to make sure that uh, battery is disconnected as seen earlier in the video, otherwise it will detonate. So make sure to do that. On the gray one, it's the same on both the drivers and the passenger side, just push the button in and it comes out fairly easily. Here, a bit more standard. This one here's a little bit wanky and you gotta pull the clip, pull the slider back and then just pull it off. You can film as you take the headrest off and also put the seat uh, fully sort of leaning forward as it makes it have a much smaller profile. So when we sit it back forward, bring it forward and then bring it out. All right. All right, now then, what you want to do is go out and get yourself some resistors. I've got these particular ones here. These are just a ceramic resistor. Five watt, 2.2 ohms. Now these will be different to different cars. You can actually get um, delete kits from Recaro or Sparco, depending on the seat manufacturer, but they don't necessarily work for all cars. In my case, I need a five watt, 2.2 ohm resistor. So that's what we've got two of here. One for the passenger, one for the driver. Get yourself your connector here. No real stress. Just wrap it around a few times. Just like that. Grab your resistor wire. Bend it back. You should have a nice little model of wires. Just like that. And like that. Then all you gotta do is get them nice and hot and put a dab of solder on. It'll hold them nicely in place. Just 
as you can see there. By no means was that the best solder in the world, but it was a solder. Now it's just as simple as lining the two parts back up. At this point, it's worth mentioning, if you're unlike me, because I'm doing both passenger and driver side, I have a spare seat and so for the spare connector that you see here. You can actually take the two wires from the resistor and plug them straight into the female connector that you see me plugging in into here. So those two wires will actually go in. Just be careful. It, it is a snug fit, but make sure to maybe wrap some tape around it so it stays in because if those connectors disconnect, then you put a reset your own pack system and that's just a whole nother kettle of fish. So for ease of uh, install, I use the clips off my record seat, but for anyone else, you can just put, plug the two wires straight in. Again, make sure at any point when you're fiddling with any of these electronics, disconnect the battery, otherwise you could have trouble. Now then guys, to get the factory seat off, it's a, real, it's a factory seat bolt off, it's really easy. Under the 14 mil bolt on the side, this plastic part here pops open. And you can pull it straight out. Feed this cord from just pull the pull the foam up here. Feed the cord up and over the rail. Get yourself a plastic connector. There's two ways to deal with these. You can just simply put a blade underneath the little bit that holds it latched and release it, just like so. Or the other alternative is on the back of there. You just squeeze in the two tabs, and it closes. Now you've got yourself your seatbelt. Tell you what guys, it's a hell of a lot lighter putting that in than it was putting the, taking the other one out. And that was easy. Then it's just a case of lining your bolt holes up. Trooch is right on into place. Down here, your lower seatbelt mount. You need to unbolt him, he's a 14 mil. Because obviously this part here is meant to be a lap sash. So you need to put it through your lap hole, that one when you put your seat on, or when you put your seat belt on, she clips on nice and snug. Otherwise it'll look real stupid. And that's where the adjuster comes in too, because you might need to lower your seat belt point, because now you got lower seats, lower seat belt point. Just a matter of bolting this back in, and we're good to test it. Obviously this is just test fitting in there for now. So I haven't actually bolted this in. These bolts on the bottom are still loose and it's not bolted in because I want to figure out how far left or right I want this seat to be. So I'm going to jump on in, figure out where I want it between those two points and then take it out and tighten it up and then we'll get it all bolted in. Look at that. In Australian weather, this is hard work, especially when you're sick. We've got her in right in the middle. It's pretty much where we want to have it as far as the left and right sliding. So we're going to take her out, chooch her up and then chuck her right back in the car. This is gonna be great. Alrighty now, we're all chooched down into place. They're all, all four of these guys are tight. We got a seat belt sensor clip ready to go as well. Now all, I'm at it, all, all there is to it is to chuck her in, bolt her down nice and tight, go have a party. And the reason I wanted adjusting rails is because these seat bolsters are very hard and they're very easy to damage as well. Now with that extra room being able to put it back, I can get in there without having to worry about ruining my bolsters. And that's great. Go ahead and put that on now. Because you know, safety first, ladies and gentlemen. We're nice and secured in. And as you can see, I can't really move the camera that well, but once again, no airbag lights. Now the reason that's important, a lot of you might think, oh, who cares? You know, that doesn't mean anything. It's really important with these cars with SRS airbags is because when you disable any part of the airbag system, it thinks there's a fault. Now that means that your steering wheel, although it might be loaded with the Takata hand grenade, make sure to go and get that checked out. Your steering wheel, your side airbags on the actual car pillars themselves, your passenger airbag won't deploy if you have any errors at all with your airbag system. So it's really important that you do this. Now, it would be argued that what I've done here is actually technically illegal as I've removed the side airbags from the seat. However, I can tell you for a fact that with these snug seats, I feel pretty secure. But that's my decision. You do this at your own risk. Please keep that in mind. Now remember to disconnect the battery before and after you've put everything back together. Make sure those resistors are in place before you reconnect the battery. Otherwise you will get your airbag light problem. But as you can see here, I'm nice and snug and we'll go for a test drive shortly. This'll be a bit of fun, won't it? <laughs> 